it is often hard to work out from what disease or from what cause a person might have died. One standard method in actuarial studies is to calculate or tease out the deaths by looking at the excess number of people who died due to a specific reason that we could actually measure. In this talk, I want to discuss how the excess method, excess deaths method can be used for calculating how the impact of COVID or any other pandemic taken place. Let's suppose we have weekly deaths figures for a given country. So from week to week, this number varies. Why? First of all, the recording of any kind of death is not immediate. There's delay. First of all, if the nature of death is not common, then there may be autopsy involved or some other medical examination uh, that might happen, which will delay the declaration of the result. So there are delays depending on the kinds of death or the nature of death or delay in the recording itself. So for example, if there are holidays or weekends coming up, then deaths are not necessarily reported immediately. There could be a delay. I want to discuss COVID deaths in Australia. What happened in Australia is instructive, not just for Australia, but for the rest of the world. And the reasons are simple. First, when COVID broke out, then most of this time, Australia stayed shut. So <clears throat> during 2020, 2021, Australia was mostly cut off from the rest of the world. And in 2021, Australia started vaccination in earnest around mid part of the year. We'll see a slide in a second. Australia had two doses of vaccine over a period of nine months or eight months. And that went from zero to 90% during that period of time. There's a picture for that. So this shows that uh, the red line shows there what percentage, cumulative percentage of Australians had their two vaccines. Now, it starts at a very low, practically zero, from May of 2021. And then you see that S curve going up. That is your typical uh, variation that you see across all countries, depending on the time length of the period that which takes for that to happen. But the shape is pretty much the same across the globe. Australia is no exception. Over a period of seven or eight months, you have practically everybody uh, having double dose of the vaccine. Now, there are some people, for example, who are uh, who have other kinds of problems, may or may not get a vaccination. So if you're immunocompromised from something else or you're getting treatment from uh, for cancer or something like that, it may or may not be advisable for you to get the vaccine. And therefore, there's always a percentage of people who do not get vaccination. And of course, there are people who absolutely refuse to get it. But overall, you see a period of uh, between May and December, practically everybody got vaccinated. Here, I'm going to show you three pictures to demonstrate how the evolution of COVID deaths happened in Australia over this period of three years. First, we start in uh, December of 2019. Of course, there was no COVID back then. And then 
the wave hit <coughs> in particular in Australia in February however if you look at this picture you will see that those dots in there gives you weekly figures of how many people are dying each week there are orange dots in the first half of the picture and it gives you what happened pre-pandemic first wave low covid and the second wave so in the first part that is low covid period you actually have those dots well below what the pre-pandemic band shows there the pre-pandemic band is a is a is a is an interval in which we expect deaths to happen over a time period so that the blue band there are around the blue line shows you that what we expect to happen notice one thing here that you always have um, deaths occurring in australia in waves the wave always happens around the middle of the year june july you see that in this picture june july of 2020 and you see that in june july of 2021 now in the first part of the picture you see that when the first wave and the second wave happened the actual figure that happened in the year 2020 is well below what we would normally expect now that's somewhat unusual because there is no reason why we would have less deaths even though the covid is circulating around australia so why did that happen the answer is fairly simple it happened because of there was a secondary negative effect that came from flu so what happened in australia people took flu vaccine with great abundance during 2020 much more so than what they normally do as a result wintertime deaths from flus fell substantially and as a result you see those dots below that blue line that we would normally expect to happen now this did not happen in 2021 because by then the delta wave had already hit and the delta wave circulated all around australia in particular in uh, the southern states of new south wales and victoria which saw a bigger rise in deaths from covid than other more fringe states like queensland or western australia in fact there were a lot of restriction to travel between states as a result you don't see that many deaths in those other states and the picture continues in the following year so the first part of this picture again is the same as in the previous slide so you see the number of deaths hovering around the, what we expect to happen in every year in pre-pandemic five-year average now when the omicron wave hit that is sort of the end of 2021 you see the orange numbers rise again above the band of the blue black the blue band that we see in that picture and that is the effect of the fact that omicron wave actually hit australia much much harder there is also another factor that plays into 2022 and that is opening up the Australian economy namely all the restrictions that we talked about earlier as soon as 90 odd percent Australians were vaccinated those were lifted so people could move from one state to the other and people who were outside of Australia could come into Australia without much restriction as a result the new Omicron variety went all across Australia and that killed a lot of people here I have the same picture only extended in time now we run from end of 
2021 to near the end of 2022 for which we have very clear data week by week so what i want you to notice is that the baseline case which is that red line is very different from the black line at the top which is actually what occurred in 2021-2022 so again the notable thing here is the number of deaths rise as we would expect mid-year for the reasons i explained earlier but in the beginning of 2022 there is another spike which is the abnormality that we observe due to the omicron wave that actually hit australia hard at the beginning of 2022 now notice that the black line stayed well above the red line there and that is the circulation of the omicron variety and because of opening up more cases coming in into australia as a result of all of that and so in the past year or so we have seen a substantial rise in mortality in australia as a result of all of that how much of excess death did we see in the past year in australia so we saw an overall 15 percent rise of deaths in that period what are the reasons behind that there are some actuarial calculations to suggest that roughly about half of that are coming from covid itself directly the other half part of the other half comes from cerebrovascular diseases and heart diseases. Now, part of that could also be attributable to COVID itself, because we do know that due to COVID, it weakens your heart and other big organs. So as a result, COVID itself probably has contributed most of that excess deaths coming from uh, during during that time period now recall that flu was virtually absent in australia during 2020 and 2021 most people got the flu vaccine and other people uh, stayed in their homes as a result they did not infect other people most of the times the flu happens when you have elderly people being visited by their younger generations so people visiting grandparents would often little children give their flu to their grandparents children don't die normally from flu but grandparents do and that's the largest single contributor for flu deaths in australia traditionally now after 2021 when all the restrictions were lifted then people started moving freely and intermingling as a result more flus came into the community that were most vulnerable and this you can clearly see in this picture where we have a list of covid deaths in australia during 2020 2022 so over a period of three years in the first year we see slightly below a thousand deaths in the second year we see it over a thousand deaths but recall that even during that time there was a lot of restriction in australia of people movement inside australia and of course people coming in from outside so the number of deaths from covid still stayed fairly low and that exploded is 2022. So on a daily basis, we had about three deaths from COVID in 2020 and also in 2021. In 2022, that went out by a factor of 10 or more. And that's a clear indication of what happened in Australia. So excess death in Australia exploded in 2022. 
And there are indications that in 2023, that explosion is slowing down. This video is in anticipation for another video that I'm going to make about what's going on in China in terms of excess debt. So you have a good sense of what it looks like when you have transparent information across the country where uh, information is not suppressed and you see a clear result of what excess debt does and should look like.